let's introduce Dr. Tom Heath. Reducing stress and living a stress-free lifestyle. Wouldn't we all like to do that? <laughs> Live a stress-free lifestyle? Participants will learn the triangle of health, structure, nutrition, mental, emotional. We will cover topics like quantum neurology, applied kinesiology, brain tap, using the alpha scan, traditional chiropractic. We will test the HRV, heart rate variability, the gold standard in the world of medicine for testing capacity and resilience, the ability to handle stress. Dr. Heath should tell us a little bit about his family because his sons are studying to be chiropractors, his wife is a chiropractor, you're third generation chiropractor, right? And so there's lots of knowledge in this family. And anyway, I'd like you to give a good hand to learning about reducing stress. Do I need to use the projector or can we see the screen? So we'll find out in a second when it comes up. Uh, she said, Tell you about the family. I don't know, Sherry did. <laughs> um, no, actually, I, I have a great grandfather, I think, that our great great grandfather. Well, did, I didn't say anything about the girls. Well, Elena works in the office. Amanda is, um, well, both of the girls worked as midwives. That's uh, the Elena, right both of the girls did around 300 births, a little more than that. Um, Amanda started when she was 17. Then Elena came a little, a couple years later and did a few more. Uh, then they worked together a lot. Um, Elena's been busy with me in the office, and Amanda is busy with her five children. So um, <laughs> she's been doing a lot of births right now. But she's she's been pretty busy. Actually, um, her last one, uh, baby number five, Gabriel, is uh, three months, pretty close to three months right now. Um, he was born at, at our house um, here in Landisville, and uh, baby number three was born at our house in Shippensburg. <laughs> baby number four, he's really interesting. He, um, she delivered him herself in Brazil. They, I say they were, she was in the jungles, her husband says, no, this really isn't the jungle. But you know, monkeys and macaws qualify for me as jungle. Um, but for him, it's like, no, no, that's not really the devil. just down in the south. So uh, they had gone down to help with the drug rehab center. When they were down there, uh, one of the younger sons, Daniel or Andrew, said, oh, they're down at a drug rehab center. <laughs> no, they were actually helping, but um, it didn't really sound like them. <laughs> so. Clarify. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> okay, so there are a couple of things we want to start with, um, and there are lots of things to kind of do together, if I can. Yeah. We're going to talk about heart rate variability, and um, Ella called me earlier and said, hey, can you make sure you bring the handouts? And so, I was busy doing a bunch of stuff. I hit the computer and I said, print. I was going to print 35 of these, and I got one. But by the time I came back down and told the computer, it was like, the printer said, receiving data. That's not going to work. So um, that didn't work. I have one. Faith says she's going to email these to you. Um, and so you'll get the little thing. It's, it's just really, the concept is the, that we look at chemistry or look at our health. Now assume this is an equilateral triangle, okay? Uh, and we're going to look at structure, chemistry, and the mental emotional. When we look at these, traditionally in our world, in Western medicine, we look at these from a uh, Greek thinking, and that Greek thinking is everything has to be in a separate identified ology. So we have psychology, cardiology, um, embryology, all of the ologies. The problem with that is that they don't talk to each other, and they don't think of you as a whole person. But you are a whole person. The sum of the parts is greater. All of the parts that are together 
is much greater than just, just adding you up. You're more than that. So, now Cheryl talked about Beauchamp. Beauchamp said it, it's what we're made of, it's the soil. So we all understand we're made from dirt, right? And if our dirt is low, our minerals are low, we're not going to be well. So we really have to go back and look at our soil and say, are we healthy and well? Is our soil connecting properly? Is it magnetically charged? Is it functioning like it should be? Or are we bombarded with EMFs? And that's damaging <coughs> our soil. It's disrupting our magnetic fields. Are we in, in, um, or do we have chemical toxicities? When we look at chemistry, you know, um, everybody know what atrazine is? Raise your hand if you know if you don't know what atrazine is. Okay. Atrazine is the second most common farm chemical. It is found in all of the water in the United States, and it has a special quality. It converts hormones, so testosterone is converted to estrogen, and estrogen is converted to testosterone. So we have lots, uh, there's a scientist, uh, Dr. Hayes, somewhere out in California, I forget exactly where he's from, but he's found out that he can transgender frogs, not he can, um, the use of atrazine, which is a weed killer, will chant transgender frogs, and you get get uh, male frogs to lay clutches of eggs. So we have this common thing, and there are a lot of people who say, well, that's just a conspiracy. It's a well-known, understood chemical process of how hormones are transferred, and why we have lots of people that have lots of cancers and other trans problems because of farm chemicals. We used to, with, will you take, we'll go back to Roundup for a minute. Everybody knows what Roundup is. Mm -hmm. All right. So Roundup in 1997 was used at 2.93 pounds per acre. You can help me out with this if I'm wrong. Um, it, today, the last time I saw the number, um, it actually was 2011, it was around 93 pounds per acre. So it's significantly increased, but at one part per million, it will begin to destroy the cells that produce testosterone and the cells that produce sperm in 24 to 48 hours. So we have lots of guys that are shooting blanks and they don't understand why. And they're eating bread. But here's the thing, at one part per million, 24 to 48 hours, right? Now the fun thing about that is Cheerios is at 1120 parts per million. Baked pita is the same thing, or real close, 1135, something like that. So there's a whole bunch of these common foods that people eat on a regular basis, and they think, oh, I'm doing good, right? No, these things are really toxic to us. So getting the organic food is really important. And going out and, and making sure that we're staying away from Roundup. There are people who spray Roundup in their garden. That seems like a conflict to me. Um, Roundup, by the, originally, back in the 50s, when, it was coming, when they came out with it, it was a chelator. Everybody know what a chelator is? It's designed to bind to minerals and pull them out of the body. So if you think your milieu is already disrupted, what do you think is going to happen when you throw in a little round it? It's really going to mess it up. So it's a big deal. Okay, so for me as a chiropractor, we're going to focus a lot on structure, but we're also going to do something really important for every person here. Sitting up straight and standing up straight is important. Because when we sit up straight and stand up straight, our diaphragm works better. When our diaphragm works right, our brain works better because we oxygenate the brain. Our, di our heart works better because it's not crushed, even that little bit. You know, people often think, well, it's just a little tiny bit. But think about this. For me as a chiro, we often say, well, when the spine is subluxated or misaligned a little bit, and, and traditional medicine will say, well, it's not that big a deal. You look on the x-ray, it's just everybody has that. So I'm going to ask everybody here to jam their thumb really hard, right? No, don't do it. But if you do it and you leave it there, is it going to cause a problem? Yes. yes. Will it show up on the x ray? No. no. Will it show up on the MRI right away? No. Is it annoying for you? Yes. Yes. Is it, does it, is it unimportant or an insignificant finding? If it's your thumb, it's insignificant. If it's mine, it's significant, right? <laughs> <laughs> so here we've got to pay attention and say, look, it's very important. Just because somebody says, I can't figure it out on the film, I can't diagnose it, doesn't mean it's not legitimate. And it means you need to find somebody else who understands what's going on, that's all. So we need to pay attention to structure. Now that also includes exercise, 
and we can say physical therapy because there are great tools within physical therapy that are wonderful for helping things. But it's understanding. So for me, as an applied kinesiologist, and, and I do quantum neurology, which we're going to get a couple of volunteers up here for some quantum neurology and some um, heart rate variability. I'm going to be real tight on the time here and show you a bunch of stuff, but we're going to do that. Um, and then mental emotional. So I like to use a t particular technique called neuroemotional technique. And it's really a lot of fun. I find it um, incredibly rewarding because when we look at things, and, and Cheryl was talking, she was talking about different things and the fats in the blood, and, and I was just thinking, she said something about the liver, and, and hey, look, if the liver's not working right, but what's one thing that's going to really affect the liver? We're going to think about in this emotional world, we're going to think about anger. And then if the gallbladder's not working right, you're not producing the enzyme, or the, the fat, I'm sorry, the bile to digest the fats and emulsify it, we're going to start thinking about resentment. Anybody here ever had any resentment? No, we all do. At some level, to some degree. But when we carry it and harbor it, you're going to see it start to affect that gallbladder. And then you're going to see it start to manifest as a problem, whether it's pain here or pain between your shoulder blades. And some of you will say, well, that's not significant. And I'll tell you a quick fun story. Sad, fun, depends. Ella had asked me to call, or asked a, a medical doctor from Scranton to call me one time. He had a son with a gallbladder problem. Yep. And so he called me, and, and, and I, was, I don't really know the guy. I never met him. I just had talked to him on the phone. And as, as I talked to him, I'm going through and explaining stuff, and, and he's saying yes, yes, agree with me as we're going. And I'm thinking he knows exactly what I'm talking about. And we get to the end, and he's like, well, that was a great neurology review. I'm like, he had no idea what I was talking about. And um, the thing was, I said to him, well, what did you do with your son's gallbladder? Because they measured it, and the ejection fraction was like 4%. And we said, well, he said, well, we took it out. I'm like, why? Just because it wasn't functioning right, turn it back on. Don't hack it out and become an amputee. It's like, why didn't you turn it back on? So how do we turn on a gallbladder? Right? We get rid of resentment. And, and where can the resentment come from? Could it be the kid's resenting his dad? Could it be his dad resented somebody else? Because things pass on. We don't pass on just hair color and eye color and, and the way we talk and walk. I saw um, somebody tonight, uh, actually I saw Earl over in Mannheim. And I saw him from the other end of town. And I'm like, well, that's Earl. Because I could tell his walk, right? Yes. And. And so I had some other patients I hadn't seen for 10 years. And actually, it was his daughter. This, this patient had come in. I hadn't seen her for 10 years when she was about 10. And then the next time I saw her, I saw her from the back. And I knew she was John's daughter because she had that little limp that John has. Now, John has the limp because he hurt his back. His daughter didn't need to have that limp. But she had copied dad, not through genetics, but through environment. So there's lots of things we pass on to our family, our kids, through our, our environment, and through our genetics. So we need to be mindful of what we speak and say and do and live and all that stuff that we pass on, because it's really a big deal. But when it comes back to the gallbladder thing, we may need to adjust the mid-back. We may need to correct the spine, allow the spine to function. 60% of the function of the brain is going to come from the movement of the spine. So it's really a big deal that the brain and the spinal cord are working. Every joint feeds back into the spine. So if you've got a joint, let's say, oh, we got a bunch of ladies here. Do you all wear bras? You don't have to answer that. But if you do, you got a strap on. Right? And that strap is going to hold the ribs so that 24,000 times a day when you breathe, that one rib cage, that one part of the rib cage, is it going to move each time. It's going to lock it in a little bit. And that means that have any of you ever worn a bra that's too tight? Guys, don't answer that. Okay, so have you ever worn a bra too tight? Okay, so what that means is that rib in particular, not only the vertebra there, so when we look at the vertebra, you've got the disc above and below, and the facets above and below. So right there, we have two, four, six joints. And then the ribs that come in, right? So we have eight joints involved, and we have eight abnormal messages that have the potential to go to the brain either too much or not enough. Maybe the ribs below and above are hyperfiring, and the ones 
and where the strap is are under firing, hypo firing. So now the brain has this message, oh, there's a problem, but what can I do? And then a lot of women wear bras that are just plain wrong. And you'd say, well, you're a guy, how do you know? Because bras are designed to hold the breasts, right? And they're often above the fulcrum. They're too high on their back. So then it's like, well, what good are they doing? They're not actually providing any support. They're just making it look right under your shirt. Well, why are you doing that? Just political correctness, or what is that? Wear it so it actually functions. And if your bra doesn't come down below your shoulder blades, down in this area, down through here, either don't wear one or go get the right kind. Don't waste the time. Make sure, and then, and then there's that thing about wires. Any of you ever wear wires? Because here's the real question. What are wires in our environment? They're all antennas, right? We've got an environment filled with microwave signals. So how many of you need to microwave your breasts? Right? Because you've got a wire that receives that signal, it drops it here in the chest, and over here on the edge of the breast, the tail of the breast. Really, should we be microwaving the breast all day long? That seems really weird to me. And then, the, the, well, guess what? The bra companies come out and say, it's not a problem. Does that seem a little suspicious? Because they're selling it. So it seems a little screwy to me. And then you've got to re really rethink that. At least cut that wire out and put the plastic insert in it. Go get a joint at a minimum. But better yet, get rid of the, the wires and the other wire support because it's just not good for it. Period. Well, that's my little two cents of uh, for us. <laughs> <laughs> so, structure, getting adjusted on a regular basis is hugely important. Chemistry, making sure we're eating right, our enzymes are right, we're eating raw foods, and we're eating meat. I fully agree. Veganism, it, it's just wrong. Period. It's we're after the fall, we don't live before the fall. People who have this fantasy, why should you eat like before the fall? It's like, good, go back there. And if you can transport yourself back there, great. If not, you're where you're at, eat me. And then mental and emotional, balance it, find out where that root problem is, and then begin to correct it. There's a number of techniques I happen to like, neuroemotional technique, I think it's a great technique. And so that's one of my really big things. Um, I love to do that. And I love to find, you know, here, I'm going to do another quick short story in this one. I had a Buddhist nun come up out of D.C. And um, we talked about her and some of the problems she was having. She, she had a, her dad had a huge problem with anger. And, um, but she came in to me, and the reason she was actually referred to me was because she had some problems with these teeth right here. And the reason was because eight years ago, somebody woke her up in the middle of the night, beating her in the face with a meat tenderizer hand. And they, she never had figured out why he came in. He didn't come in to rape her. He didn't come in to steal anything. Beat her in the face with a hammer and then left. That's really weird. So I saw her once, twice, and then she went to Canada to see her mom because her mom, mom was dying. And then she came back the third visit. And I said to her, why did you invite this guy into your house? She said, I did not. I said, you did. Why did you? I have no idea why I knew that, but I knew she did. Now, then we have to figure out what that really means, because I didn't really know what it meant when I said it. So I'm thinking about this, and as we're going through this process, we started to find out, because we're all from our parents, right? And our parents pass things on, whether it's emotions, whether it's hair color, eye color, all that kind of fun stuff. And so I said, well, let's figure this out. You know, we know she knows her dad had a huge problem with rage. And her grandfather, I mean, she didn't know him really well, but she knew there were some problems. Her great-grandfather, she didn't know, but there were some issues there. So I said, let's do this. Let's find out. We're going to figure out and ask your heart what's going on. You listen to your heart and see what it says. So she was quiet and paid attention. And it came out that she realized that somebody, in particular, her great-great-grandfather, had hit somebody in the face with an axe. Oh. So I said, you know, in my world, if there is not restitution, there will be retribution. That's called repentance. If you don't repent, or you don't make it right, it's going to come back to you or your descendants. That's how the whole system works. And certainly in our world as a Buddhist, they did the same thing. She got it, and then she quoted to me scripture. So, like, okay, she gets it to the third and fourth generation. There are a lot of things going on, folks. And we need to pay attention to how far this goes and how much it affects us. 
you know, for me, I had years and years, I had this big caution. My, my wife and daughters love to have candles burn. And I'm like, put it out, and it burn, blow it out. No, because it didn't burn right. I'm like, yeah, put it out. And the reason for me was because my father, when he was 10, there was a house fire. And two sisters and brother died in the fire. So I'm always way cautious of fires, right? I have them, and we burn wood to keep the house and all that stuff. But I'm way cautious about overly paranoid about it. Until I finally realized where it came from, then I just got a little, I stayed cautious, but not paranoid. So it makes a difference to understand what's going on. All of these things are really important when we address the whole person and look at what's going on with you. So now I need two volunteers. And Joyce is going to be one. She doesn't know, but she's going to be one. Because I want to check the TMJ issue with her. <coughs> I do. Come on, baby. So we're going to do two different things. And I hope you're not upset about it. I'm not going to touch it. Well, I'm going to whack it. I'm not All right. So when they come up, you're going to get to go first. Actually, no, I'm going to have Elaine do this because she's going to run on her own while I do something with you. Okay. So, uh, and we're going to try to do this with everybody kind of looking at the screen. Can everybody see that? If not, the rule is move up. All right. No, we're not checking about that. Not today. This is going to be heart rate variability. So what we're going to do is hook up the wrists and then get up to the wall. Okay, so Elena's job is to sit still for five minutes, and it, or so we, till we get 300 heartbeats. And what we're doing is we're looking at the variability in the distance between each heartbeat, and we want to see some variability. Her capacity, her heart rate variability, is going to show us her adaptability, or her adapt, her ability to adapt to stress in her environment. So we want her to be able to adapt to stress in her environment. We want her to um, have an autonomic nervous system that is really functioning well, and if it's not, we're going to do the hummingbird exercise. So everybody's going to demonstrate that for me before we leave today, so we all know how to do it. Because um, it's one of the cheapest things you can do, right? It doesn't cost anything, except a little bit of time, eight to 10 minutes a day, spread out one minute at a time. And then as you go through this process, we're going to look at some other things. We're going to look at her biological age versus her chronological age. 
We're going to look at some brain stress. We're going to look at the energy put out by our immune system. And it kind of gives us an idea of her aura and then each of the chakras and the energy in each of the chakras and say where she's at with us. And it'll be kind of fun in that. And so now, as she goes through this, we're going to do something with choice. Do whatever you want. It's fun. <laughs> okay. So, our choice. Yeah, it's really important. We all like to do it. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is go through the cranial nerves. And the mic is way over there, and i got to use my hands, so I can't hold it. So, what we're going to try to do is um, find out something about all the cranial nerves and are they working. Hey, does anybody have anything smelly? Anything what? Smelly, like smelly. even an essential oil or anything? I do. I have yeah. a yeah. Something. Okay. All right, so here's your okay? arm strong, right? Okay. So I'm going to smell this. I have no idea what it is. So <laughs> hold it up. So that doesn't actually look so great in the lab, okay? <laughs> so we'll use that again in a couple minutes. All right, now, hold strong. Look at my finger. Look in the distance at L. Okay? That didn't work. So that's the cranial nerve one and, and three. Now, what I want you to do is keep your head still and have your eyes up here. Okay? And down here, three and six. Over here, three and six. Up here, three and six. Up top, three. Down here, three. We had here four and six. We're here four and six. Those are great. Okay, so those are really working nicely. Okay. Now, um, what I want you to do is relax and move your jaw. Okay, draw something. Let me ask you. Relax. Don't hold it tight. Hold it tight. Actually, it's not. <laughs> hold it tight. There we go. On this one. Hold. So the TMJ and the fifth cranial nerve aren't working like this should. So let's do the sensory part. Sensory general range, not TMJ. So the sensory nerve and the motor portion of the trigeminal nerve doesn't work properly either way. Okay. So now let's go to seven. Big smile with your teeth. I'm your, trying to open your eyes shut. Okay. So seven doesn't work right either. You will see. Eight. 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 Oh, that's not working right. Eight. That doesn't work right. All right. So your tongue to the back of your mouth. Tickle, tickle the roof of your mouth. Okay, not yet. Stick your tongue out of this. <laughs> All right, stick it out to the side. Now this side. Okay. Now say la 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 la. La 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 la. Goo 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 goo. Goo 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 goo. Ga 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 ga. Ga 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 ga. No no no. Swallow. <laughs> so you go from noise to small. So we know that part of 10 works and part of 10 doesn't work. All right. Now I'm going to show the shoulders. Keep them up. Hold it. Okay. Hold it. All right. So those aren't working really like they should. So what we're going to do is use these modified grudge rules. <laughs> <laughs> Come up this one. And really what they are is um, they're in um, infrared light. And we're going to use these to help stimulate her brain and tell her brain, pay attention, begin to heal it. Because we are we operate at more than just food. We really are energy, right? When we eat food, what do we do? We extract the energy out from it and throw the rest away. Assuming Cheryl will eliminate it like we should, right? Yeah. When we're not, we've got a different set of problems. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> so now our question becomes in you. We'll come back to you in just a minute, all right? Yeah, all right. So now, hold strong. Oh, I need the lavender. Here we go. Hold strong. And that still works. Good. So it turns back on. So we know number one's going to work right and focus, good faith, focus. That was doing better. All right, and then we get to tap on the job. Oh. Tom has his degree. 
in neurology. That one is a good So now let's do the cell phone. V1, V2, V3. So those are all. And it's awesome. And he so that's five and um, seven and then right here. And so we do this. Okay, now we can just do this and be able to correct it. That one's working better. Hold your tongue to the back of your mouth. Take out the roof of your mouth. Stick your tongue out of this. That's better. And then swallow. Oh, <laughs> swallow. <laughs> All right, so those all changed. Yeah. Now, what's going to happen is everybody asks that question, will it change permanently? Will it stay? And there are several questions to that. Now, we know that these problems have been here for a long time. So that means that there may be, like anything, an, an ability, a, a need to rehabilitate these tissues. There are maybe other layers. The truth is that, curl your toes, look like you. Look in the distance. Yeah, in okay. So if I ask you to chew gum and walk at the same time, it's going to be too much for your nervous system. It says I can't do it yet. So the basics are better. But doing multiple multitasking isn't going to work yet. It will. But like anything, you have to kind of work into it. It'll come. And then if I ask you to start using other parts of the nervous system, if I start asking you to just count backwards and and hum a tune and do other things, pretty soon you're going to be like, oh, it's too much. It's like, it happens, but we'll get that to calm down and do more and more until it progressively heals up. That part is a little bit of quantum knowledge. Sorry, any questions? Anyway, would you buy this? Well, you're saying I couldn't go up and chew down and do all that, but I can. No, I'm just using that as an example. So if I ask you. You're saying there are things that you would ask me to do that would. Yeah, so if I'm asking you to contract the cur curly toes, I'm asking what I'm essentially doing is saying use the sacral plexus, and when you look in the distance, I'm actually asking you to um, do a combination, the third cranial nerve, which is the parasympathetic, and by doing both of those, the brain is saying, I can't do both of those. Gotcha. So walking and chewing gum is just an example. Yeah, yeah, okay, so it wasn't just... It wasn't that, it was just... just the concept. Okay. okay. So there's more layers to that, but the basic is, yeah, you can start to change it immediately. Okay. Yeah. It's something we haven't done with you before. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. So change your heart. So the deep breathing does change your heart, and that's what you can see it does. But it's the lesson we want to see. So I want to try to move this over a little more, so that everybody can kind of see what we're doing. All right, so when we come in here and we want to look at the body, we want to find out where she's at based on her heart rate variability. If she is in this little green thing represents the parasympathetic part of the nervous system. The yellow represents the sympathetic, and the red represents the neural hormonal. Okay? And so, you know, Elaine likes to use some things to help charge her magnetic field, right? Because she uses a beam on a regular basis. And so that's actually looking pretty good. We see a good spread up in here. All right, so um, you're at point two. It could be just a little bit better, but it's pretty good. Um, we want to see a little more balance with the hormones here. They're a little predominant, which is indicating um, limited stress management. So we need to work on some stress management. That's a, a big thing we want to look at. So we're going to take a jump over here and look at her brain. And her brain says, hey, there's a little bit of nervous uh, overstrain in the brain. If you want it really in this blue setting area that's nice and balanced. So this means that there's either fatigue or extra brain strain. And it's, it's one of those things. This is a great way to get an idea of what's going on inside. Because we already feel that fatigue, but how can I measure and what kind of things can I do to show that I'm changing? And this is one of those tools to help indicate that. Well, let's go see how it all oh, oh, Let's take a look at this. So this right here is kind of the indication of the brain activity. So right here is the delta activity, and that's our daily living, what we're doing just to get by, how we're managing things. And then here, Theta is our dreaming, alphas, our um, capacity to think and do new things. 
and then we have beta and gamma, which we'll use more of, but we're, it's clear that they're not being used very heavily. So they should they, we should have them higher. And interestingly, well, I had a different Buddhist nun in the other day, and I did this scan on her, and hers were all great. She spends a lot of time in meditation. And she does, she spends hours in meditation, more than most do. So most people say, well, I don't really have the time. She's not married, and she specifically went that way to avoid that. So now, what are we going to do? Because I don't want to have hours a day to spend sitting there. So I have to think about how I'm going to manage it. And so what we did is we introduced the brain tap into the office. And the brain tap is a way that uses um, light therapy for the ears and the eyes, as well as um, sound, different kinds of notes, and sometimes we use talking. So uh, Dr. Porter, back in, down in South Carolina, put it together to help people figure out how they could do about six hours of, of um, meditation in about 20 minutes, which is really handy. Because you involve other senses and other parts of the brain, and by using tones and lights and, and various things, you can actually help that brain calm down or increase the activity in certain areas so you have more function. And I actually find it really amazing because I can find myself with lots of things to do. I have an office in Shippensburg. I'm opening an office in Landisville. Is that a lease in Landisville? Um, I need cars, but Comcast hasn't yet gotten back into the numbers yet. So I don't have a new phone number for Landisville yet. I talked to him this afternoon at 4. Yeah, 4. And uh, you were supposed to give that to me last week. Uh, yeah, well. So, well, no, I mean, I know. He's, he actually, we switched to the, uh, the other Shippensburg office, and he's, he's working. I get it. Life happens. So I'll get the number um, and have cards out, certainly within the next week. And that's going to go to get those out. And um, we're going to continue having different talks at the, at the Landisville office. That's 14 West Main Street. Anybody know where the fire hall is in Saluga, Landisville? It's right across the street from the fire hall. Wow. Really easy to find. I can do that, but just so everybody knows it, um, I'm going to keep the Shippensburg number, the 530-555 number, and then I'm going to add a new number for this area, so we can keep both of those. Um, and we've added a bunch of other fun stuff for the office. Um, we've got some orthotics, and I don't have it yet, it'll be in soon. Uh, just the vibration plate, because the vibration plate helps move, and then if you exercise while you're on it, it does even more for you. A lot of fun stuff with it. Um, so let's go take a look at um, how old we're doing here. All right, so today she is 61. But she's actually 60, 63, so she's doing good. So it, it really it can give you a great indication of how well you're taking care of yourself, how stressed you are. So when we're doing really good, this thing will show up and, and show up and really harmonize. I've had people, I have a uh, friend of New York who's 73, but he showed up as 57. Which is great, because his wife is 50. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to go look at another part of this. So then when you take a look at this one, this is going to be reflective of the aura or the energy that she puts out, which is about 31%. So we do have people that will come up and... So this is Daniel, my uh, middle son. He's got a 94% on this one, so he's putting out lots of energy. But he's 21, so we kind of expect him to do that, right? And, and at the same time, we all want to go back to that kind of thought that you think. But this is kind of an indication of how we can go back there. It's like, look, I'm, I'm low, and if I do certain things, I can begin to restore that. Because we know that. With, with um, John, who is 73, he honestly, he, he helped me move over here. John did a, an amazing job of helping me pack the truck and all kinds of stuff. And he really is young. He's doing a great job. So you can do a lot with it. It's amazing. And one of his really big things is breathing. And he does a lot of qigong and breathing. It makes does about 20 minutes a day with that. 
and apparently works because it really is a big, big deal to do that. So now when we look at this, this is the energy chakra that we put out in each of the energies in the level. So in this one, this is the, the crown, and this is how much you're putting out, um, 27%. 32% is going to be for the nervous system, eyes, nose, and spine. 33% um, for the larynx, um, thyroid, vocal cords, and upper part of the lungs. The heart is at 36%, circulation in the heart. 32% will be stomach, pancreas, gallbladder, and liver. 20% will be at the general cilia, plexus, and appendix, and the metabolic rate. Oh, so you're going to amputee, you should come and say and then, so that means that the bacteria in the colon will become the most. And then 25% down here at the um, bladder, uterus, and legs. So that we tie into regeneration and immunity. So what should they be? Oh, ideally? Yeah. You know, we're shooting for that 100%, right? Yeah, 98%. Okay. So That's what we really want to do. Like, yeah. Yeah. Kind of yeah, it's it's solve all it's kind of there, there and you go. And we also know that we can change that. So that hummingbird exercise will help change that. Breathing. Everybody know who Wim Hof is? Wim Hof is a guy from um, North Norway. He's the guy that likes to climb Mount Everest in a pair of boots and shorts. <laughs> and literally has done that, and he's taught a bunch of other people to go mountain climbing in, in snowstorms and stuff, and he was fine. He stood on blasts of ice and melt them, and he really well. Is going to know to get in a, in a um, clear pool of water with clear glass around it. It's, I think it's at 33 degrees, and he hyper oxygenates, and then he holds his breath for 20 minutes in that water. I have no interest in that. <laughs> but the point is look, the body has this great capacity, and, and we're not all utilizing all of that. We tend to operate at this lower level and think, well, how come I can't do more? So we can do more. This is a way to measure it. And this is how we begin to fix it. In correct structure, whether it's through quantum neurology or applied kinesiology or traditional chiropractic. We cover chemistry is nutrition. I don't know what's great about nutrition and telling us how we should eat, what we should eat. We can use the blood to show, hey, look, We've got too much Rouleau. We have too many sticky cells. And what can we do to change it? We know enzymes will do it. Hydrochloric acid, salicylic acid, phosphoric acid, exercise, breathing. All of those will help break up that, move, that uh, Rouleau when the cells are stuck together. They'll all do that. But mental, emotional, get your head on straight. And some of us, literally, our head does not sit on top of our neck. Right. It's not. It's It's perfect. It's amazing how many people's heads are not. Sure. So, whether the shoulders are high, the hips are high, the hips are torqued or twisted, you had that fall 15 years ago, you got dropped on your head as a baby, and you're like, hey, it's never there. Fix it. Adjust the skull, correct the muscle imbalance, begin to restore it. It can all be done. And sometimes, some people take a lot of work, and some people take some basic efforts. Some people take a lot of information. There's a whole bunch of layers. They may have problems in every layer. Some people just have one layer. Whatever it is, you just fix it. Take away the interference and let the body heal itself. Whether the interference is toxic thinking, physical problems. Let me ask a hard question for a Do any of us believe lies about ourselves? We'll get rid of it. What did the Messiah say? Take every thought captive and renew your mind. Get rid of the bad thoughts. Some call that negative self-talk, right? If you have negative self-talk, stop it. And you know, our life is whatever we want it to be. It's however we want it to be. Our life will be whatever we want it to be. So if you have a miserable life, change it. If you have a great life, keep it. But really, I mean, you know, there are people who are like, well, you know. My life isn't what I want it to be. Okay, it's yours. You get that's that's one of the great things. You can make it into anything you want it to be. You know, if you have a problem, here's the fun one. If you have a problem with your spouse, what are you supposed to do first? Look in the mirror. 
going to change the person in the mirror. And then your spouse will get nice. Hey, everybody know the story about, um, let's see, see if I can remember this story properly. There was a, um, um, oh, yeah, there was a, a woman who really, really, really um, disliked her husband. She just really disliked him. So she had gone to the pastor and said, hey, what, what? I don't want to be with an angry um, actually, it wasn't the pastor. It was somebody else. I'm sorry. It was somebody else, and she wanted to poison him. That's right. She wanted to poison him. So instead, he said, well, what I want you to do is give him this pill. You can't just kill him. You've got to do it a little bit at a time. And so you just have to give him a little bit every day. And then after a while, he started, she started caring for him. Because he started to get a little better as she was caring for him. And then she went back to this guy and said, I don't want him to die. No, I don't. You're fine. It was right. <laughs> it's all about our attitude. It really is. I mean, we can all say that. It's all their fault. Sometimes it is. And that's legitimate. But a lot of times, we create the life that we have. That person responds to the mirror that they're seeing. And we're that mirror. So... We, if we don't like it, we have to change it. So um, I guess the big thing is, now that we're going to have an office over here, and, uh, the goal is to open it in mid-May, as soon as I can get everything together, which is going to be a fun challenge for me, because I'm still going to maintain Shippensburg for a while, and then Landisville. So we're going to do both offices for probably a couple months, until I get really tired of the run. I've been doing the run for eight months, back and forth. Um, and it's getting old. <laughs> um, and it's getting dangerous. My goodness, 81 is like, uh, somebody dies about every day. There was last week. Somebody died every day last week. And somebody died one day. So it's pretty bad. Um, and I, I, I'm going to give a plug for everybody. You don't call Penn Dot Town White Island. Because we really, we have so many trucks. Because of the warehouses, there's really shooting three lights. And it needs to be three lanes from Winchester to um, 78 split. Because um, we're running all the traffic up to New York and Toronto and all that stuff. Um, that's got unrelated to health, but very much related to saving a lot of lives. Because people are dying because the road is a moving parking lot at 75 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. um, and that needs to change, but it's only going to change when the wider roads. Because the cars aren't going to work. And the trucks aren't. Anyway. On a happy note, um, we can have a great life, and we should, by doing things that bring about the vibrancy of our, our lives. Whether it's through the hummingbird exercise, using Dima, or any of the other things that are going to help stimulate our lives, breathing, all of that stuff. So, I think to finish for me, I'm going to ask everybody to stand up, and we're going to go back and read the hummingbird. So, bend over. Squat, arms behind your back, you're going to twist them, you're going to contract the pelvic floor, arch your head back, way back, and say la 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 la, and then roll your hands the other way, nup 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 Alright, so why are we doing the two sounds? To stimulate the 10th cranial nerve, we're forcing different actions of the tongue, and so we're going to make the tongue do that by doing the. So if when we're in fight or flight, we're in this position, right? We're going to fight. Can I fight in this position? No. no. I can take it on the chin, but I'm not going to be a good fighter. So that position stimulates parasympathetic rest, relaxation, restoration. Okay? That's why we do the exercise. And if we do it, we do great. It's a really, really handy tool. Okay, so that's, that's it for me tonight. Thank you. I, I do want to say I'm going to be another talk tomorrow night at uh, 14 West Main Street. It's okay. Well, I'm going to start somewhere. I have it. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. So, and really, um, my goal is to make that one a lot more question and answer. So, bring questions. You know, I always like the, the harder, the harder the question, the more fun it is for me. But, um, and I, um, 
Yeah, so everybody can come. If you want to send anybody else over, please do. So, because I'm starting this office, and I know one of the rules is you got to have people here. All right. All right. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.